Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, folks. Are we live? It looks like We're it. Live. Woo! How exciting. <laughs> Happy Juneteenth week of newborn, everyone. Yes. All Juneteenth. around America and the world. <laughs> Yes, we're uh, we're super happy to be here, um, and we are we are the Juneteenth of New Bern committee, and uh, we are so grateful that New Bern now and, and Wendy Card have allowed us to celebrate our week with you all. So thank you graciously, Wendy. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for including me. So this is awesome. Yes. <laughs> So Juneteenth of New Bern has exploded higher than uh, or larger than I believe it's ever been before. It's amazing to see that something that went from one or two days has expanded from a week and is now 10 plus days of activities and things that people can be involved with to learn more about uh, the culture, the rich culture and history that is around here, as well as the history of our um, African American and Hispanic population. Um, so we are happy to be a vessel for that and to uh, bring to life this amazing um, holiday. And we'll talk about the, uh, the facts around it being a federal or you know a national or a local holiday a little bit later on. But um, let's introduce our panelists. So we have, of course, from uh, New Bern now, our, our guest host, or excuse me, our host, Wendy uh, Card. Hi, folks. <laughs> we also have uh, Miss Sharon Bryant from Tryon Palace and just overall throughout uh, our community. Um, she is a pillar and we thank, uh, we thank God for, let's just be honest, <laughs> on this committee. <laughs> and all the history that she brings. Yeah. And we have Miss, I call her New Bern herself, Miss Native New Bernian, now living in New York, uh, Ashley Taylor. Yes. And yeah. our <laughs> and our guest uh, host for tonight is um, out of, you know, I'm sorry, I get emotional when I think about my hometown and I think about the fact that I get to mix, uh, mix that with my new town that I've called my home now um, that I have also fallen in love with. And uh, just to see that we are able to connect all of those things together under the, 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 the umbrella of um, just black magic and, and, and everything that Juneteenth represents and all of the um, education and all of the history and, and the, the respect and pride of our ancestors that we bring with this celebration. I'm super excited for us to be able to connect with none other than the Vice President of Juneteenth Buffalo, Mr. Raz Jomo. And then, please let me know if I said that right, sir. Perfect, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, and we will also be joined later by our um, uh, one of our city aldermen, uh, alderwoman, Jamisha Harris, who also has a tie back to New York because she is from Albany, New York, <laughs> and currently residing here in New Bern, North Carolina, and making big waves and big change here towards progress. So looking forward to having her join us momentarily. But thank you guys and, and welcome everyone. Okay, happy to be here. So I guess um, what we first want to start with is what is Juneteenth? What is the buzz? What is the pull, the draw, the magnetism, it seems, this year about Juneteenth? When you hear that word, what does it mean to you? And audience, please feel free to, to um, interact with us via the chats. We will be sharing this on Juneteenth of New Bern page in the next minute. Um, and you can ask questions and we will answer them here live um, as, and be as interactive and as vocal as you can. We want to have an open and honest conversation and dialogue around Juneteenth uncut. 
So, uh, anyone is uh, able to jump in? Just let me know. What do you think? What What does oh. Juneteenth mean? Um, let me say I, this. Oh, go ahead, Miss Sharon. Um, what Juneteenth means to me. First of all, I want people to understand that Abraham Lincoln did not free the slaves. He started it, but he didn't finish it. And second, what it means to me is my ancestors, the shoulders that we stand on, the things that they went through uh, years and years ago, 400 years ago. And today, we can actually celebrate this wonderful festival. You know, when we started out, Six years ago, we were just doing lecture series. Three years ago, we partnership with Yup. We had a reception, we had drums, we had everything. And today, it is a 10-day celebration festival that includes everybody in it. And so if you're not part of it, join us. It is going to be an awesome time. I am looking so forward to seeing this. I'm looking so forward to hear my ancestors saying, praise God, that this is happening. That's my two cents. Yes, Miss Sharon. <laughs> oh, Miss Sharon, our guiding light. I would say for me, Juneteenth, being able to celebrate it and make it such a huge and important event. For me, it means actually being able to break free and break those chains, chains that we've had. Like so much when I was growing up as a child here in New Bern, I've always learned about, you know, 1776. And I always learned about, you know, Independence Day and the 4th of July, but never ever have I been able in living life and in living color, be able to actively celebrate the freedom of my ancestors, you know, from, you know, we've been freed over 400 years now. And to be able to show that to youth and to tell children now today that they're able to celebrate this and they're able to say we are free and they're able to stand on their ancestors' shoulders and shout and scream and be who they are. That is what Juneteenth means to me because again, coming from where I came from in New Bern, those things weren't celebrated. Those things weren't talked about. You know, we weren't told those things. So to be able to bring my children from Brooklyn, New York, you know, back home to New Bern, North Carolina, and for them to see it unfold, you know, this is nothing but a dream. Giving back to my people is nothing but a dream. So Juneteenth for me is a dream come to life. That is so beautiful and i'm so happy to be here to be a part of that for you just for you if it meant nothing to me but just that smile right there was enough. <laughs> Y'all know <I'm> high. <laughs> yeah so i feel like especially as someone who is you know often referred to as an import i'm not from here i didn't grow up here people may or may not know me may or may not know that you know me and Michelle have been working this thing out with june t for the last four yeah. years just really stomping it out um you know, it's, it, that did a lot for me. And if June, like I said, Juneteenth didn't mean nothing else, just watching you say that and watching people like Wendy's reaction and watching things like our Sankofa musical review, who we have the um, pleasure of being on the um, podcast right now with the person who invented Sankofa Day in Buffalo. So things like who, who I got that information from and told that to the director of the New Bar Civic Theater, who then created a musical called Sankofa. So um, it's just been beautiful um, to see that. And I think everything that I've seen, even in the, uh, the days leading up to today, are enough of a meaning for Juneteenth to me to continue this over and over and over again. Um, but the deepest meaning for me uh, with Juneteenth is the fact that I can honestly, and I've said this before, remember participating in Juneteenth since I can remember 
um, my earliest memories were of seeing the parade and picking up the candy and seeing the, um, the best of our community marching down the heart of my community. It made me feel like I was a part of something greater and something bigger and somebody cared about us, even if it was just for that moment to see a Marine recruiter walking down the street which made me interested, which ultimately made me serve. It, it made it seem it was possible for me. So to now be able to recreate that in my new home and see it um, and do that for another child is, is all that I could have ever asked for. So just having somebody from Buffalo um, is, is icing on the cake for me. So, um, but yeah, uh, I guess, I know that Mr. Jomo is going to bring a wealth of knowledge when he speaks, so I'm trying to lead up to him. And, and not that I'm passing you over at all. I just know from conversations that we've had that um, I, I, I want to say the best for last. And I'm not saying that anybody is better than anybody, but um, I want to be able to give you that time to, to really tell what Juneteenth means to you. So yeah. I would love to get, before we get to him, a different perspective on, uh, Wendy, what really have you learned or what does it now mean to you after you've done your research or you've been involved in some of these things, what does Juneteenth mean to you? It means freedom, well, obviously, but um, I moved here, I don't know, 2005 and it was a, a different just it was a different uh, I don't know how to explain it I there was really no publicity about any African-American events any th there was really no talk of you know anyone businesses being spotlighted um, unless they were really popular people um, and it's since I met Talina and Miss Sharon and, and so many in the community, I've really, um, I've really learned a lot. And I, I thank I, everyone who has taught me, you know, the, 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 we're all teachers to each other in some way. And y'all have been positive teachers to me. Um, and th I, I, I thank you for that. And there's, there's people in the community, there's a lot, lots of them now that, that I'm friends with, but back then I was in the Navy, you know, that's how, so that's how I got here. I'm from Grand Island. So I go Bills. But I, I'm, I'm honored to be part of this and thank you. I appreciate that. So. Awesome. Wendy, we appreciate you more than you probably get told every day, but at the end of the day, if you didn't create a space and a platform for us to be able to spotlight some of the things that we discuss and talk about, not just for Juneteenth, but throughout the year, because you make it very aware yeah. that you know, Black History Month just isn't in February and um, Juneteenth isn't just June 19th, um, but you create an open safe space for dialogue to be able to discuss those things, um, to have facts, to have uh, great conversations with people, all different kinds of people from all different backgrounds. You don't just focus on any one community, but you make it uh, equitable for us to come up here and share this platform with you. So thank you. Um, for being an ally and more than that, just being a friend of truth and knowledge and what's right. So thank you. And with that, Mr. Jomo, please tell us what does Juneteenth mean? Fan club. <laughs> Fan club. <laughs> Next time we get a gang signs or something, it's getting up. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell us, I'm sorry, uh, what your, about your organization as well after you tell us that. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Ross Jomo Okono. I'm here in Buffalo, New York. Uh, my family has been in Buffalo, New York for about two generations. Uh, before there, my family, just like most families, have uh, migrated from the South. Uh, my family is out of the Huntsville, Alabama area. Um, so this whole crisscrossing of America, we keep having migrations to try to make and find better life is like we're just kind of wandering, you know, back and forth, which is good. Get a chance to meet and make nice um, community with everyone. Um, as a child, I'm going to answer the question. As a child, 
every time we went down south, my grandmother, no matter what time of the day or night it would be, she would say, hey, we're about to go past the Mason-Dixon line. You eight years old, hey, you know, we're about to get ready to go past the Mason-Dixon line. 10, 12, 13, hey, we're going past the Mason-Dixon line. As a child, I was wondering, why does she keep telling me the same thing over and over and over, you know? Um, coming from the south and getting a chance to learn and learn history, there's a there's a different etiquette, there's a different culture, and there's a there's a, a different um, distinct history of how things evolve. And one of the most important things I think that is going to be uh, needed for all of us to move forward in this country and this earth uh, right now is that all of us are going to have to presently understand where we are now and how we got here, and thinking about how we're going to move forward. So that concept in West Africa, a word out of Ghana, it's a combination of three words, san, ko, and fa. It means go back, fetch, and return. That means that it's not wrong for you to return to the past, find out what's necessary, and move forward. There are a couple of different icons. One icon is a bird with his body facing forward and his head is looking back. And what takes place right now is that we're at a time in American history that has the same imagery patterns that have already happened here before. The only people wise enough to know it are people who have studied and who know history. Without knowing history, you can be caught up in the waves of emotion and propaganda and you can be swayed without any anchor, or any rudder, or any sail. You're just kind of getting moved. You're emotionally drained. We're, we're, we're living in a time where we have had one of the most dangerous economic crises in US history since the Great Depression. We've also had one of the most dangerous health pandemics since the Spanish flu. And we also have one of the most dangerous racial divides in American history uh, maybe since like the elections in the 1870s and 80s. All these things are happening simultaneously. And I don't know if people have even breathed or taken the time to really breathe and realize what we have seen in 2020 with all of our hopes and aspirations of what we've learned medically from the ophthalmologists about 2020 being perfect vision. I think the, the, the thing now is not really in our eyes. I think it's gonna be in our throat. Can we really swallow what has been forced in our mouth for 2020. Mm -hmm. God has showed us a lot of things in 2020. He has showed us who is who and what is what. Mm -hmm. Oxymoron of the 21st century right now is, are we really ready to accept what we have seen? Mm -hmm. What took place on January 6th? Mm -hmm. What took place okay. what, in the year 2019 before January 6th? And before I started to repress the thought process of 1619, we celebrated or we commemorated 400 years since African Americans have been reduced, Africans in America, to an enslavement system. Now, we all know that Africans were here before 1619. That's not the point. The point is the status of indentured servitude, people going into slavery, that process. Now, but mm -hmm. don't understand it, I hope that maybe you got a pen and pencil or you can write this down and record it. But you all need to take a look at 1619. You need to look at 2019. And then you need to look at your Bibles. If you have a Bible, just look at it for a reference point. But take a look at Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. And when you get a chance to read those things, now it's two years there. We're about 402 years into this voyage, not as an individual, because Black people are not supposed to be thinking as individuals. We're collective, social, harmonious people. We, we, we don't, we're not, we're not designed to do nothing. I made it myself. That, that's not even in our culture. Our blood don't function right when it happens. We have a more holistic mind where we think about the people who are rich, the people who are poor, the people with education, the people with no education, the people with pants pulled up too tight like Steve Urkel, and the people whose pants sag down a little bit below their uh, anterior, okay? so. With all of those things taking place, the holistic struggle of our people, which usually crisscrosses in church. I want to tell you something else which crisscrossed in church. And I'm getting to what Juneteenth means. Stop me when you're ready for me to stop it. All this make 
I need, I need to lay the I need to lay the thought process as we're going between North Carolina and New York State. It seems like most of New York State is there, but you know, as we're going back and forth, you know, between places. Um, in January 1863, that is when the Emancipation Proclamation by Abraham Lincoln was supposed to have taken effect. Then, just like now, black people don't believe the system. So most black people for safety went where? They went to church. Mm -hmm. And that is where your watch night church service comes from on New Year's yeah. Eve. Before you, uh -huh. before you go to the parties, y'all sneak into church. I mean, you go to church and you sneak. Amen. In. So what happens is that watch night ceremony, that, that's black America that's holding on to that. You know what I mean? Like baseball and apple pie. They have to go together in, in, the, in the framework because we've been doing it for generations. Where did it come from? Watch night service took place because people wanted to find out, are we really going to be free when the new year kicks in? Or is this some sort of plot or some sort of scheme? All right. So that's January 1st, 1863. So many people who were in the close proximity of watchful eyes followed rules. I looked at North Carolina, it says January 1st, 1863 is when slavery was abolished. You could fact check it, see if mm -hmm. it exists, all right? That's because That's of the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, now there are some people then, just like now, history kind of repeats itself, who don't care what the rules are, they're gonna do what they wanna do. Mm -hmm. so in a place like Texas and places kind of like today, who don't wanna follow no rules, they decide to keep their people enslaved anyway. So on June 19th, 1865, two and a half years later, John goes to Galveston, Texas, and he's telling the people, I don't want to say slaves, and I don't want you to slay slaves either. The people who are enslaved, because people don't just slave themselves. Uh -huh. It's a process. Yeah. So the, they were enslaved, and he said, you all have been free for about two and a half years I am here on behalf of the U.S. government to make sure that you all recognize your freedom. And, and that was June 19th. So that kind of creates what many people call the Juneteenth in many cities and states do things different ways. Um, Buffalo's Juneteenth, the conversation came up, Buffalo's Juneteenth was established by the BUILD organization. It was a social conscious organization. Mm -hmm. and, uh, William Gator was the leader. And in 1976, as a community, the greatest bicentenary Black people in Buffalo began to question historical and culture, like, wait a minute, as they're making this big hoopla about 1776, it's kind of taking us back to the Frederick Douglass like kind of um, thing. This this 4th of July is like for y'all, it's, it's not for us. Our, our people, the majority of our people are still enslaved. You, you celebrating freedom, which is good. But where's your humanity if you're celebrating freedom and you're hell bent on keeping us enslaved? What where where's your where's your you know, one God and, you know, all of those things that you pledge allegiance to. Where, where, Where's your humanity when it comes to that? I'm quite sure your animals and your cows and everything was decorated, was celebrated. But, but what about the other humans who were here? Many of them who were here before, many immigrants came here. Most of the unknown families have been here since enslavement. The only people in, in, in America, Black people who are here, um, who are recent, are people who have signed up to get citizenship or people who have resident alien cards. Mm -hmm. If you don't possess those things in your family, you're evidence of stolen property, which is human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, if you can't show the document, that means that, that, that when, when you were made a citizen, that also meant that you were a person who was stolen. You represent a lineage, a bloodline that was stolen, not slaves, sovereign people were enslaved, stolen, kidnapped, and human traffic across not just state borders and city borders, country and international waters and borders. Families were removed to structure, the history, the culture, spiritualities, all of those things were disrupted and you were forcibly placed into a subhuman condition backed by law. So now as we get a little bit more educated, we talk about trauma, we're getting into mental health, we're trying to holistically uh, benefit people. What, what about the hundreds of years, 402 years worth of trauma that's inside of our blood? Those, those things don't go away. The, the, the systems, the, 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 the anguish, the anxiety, and all those other things that we so-called plague with, 
those, those, those systems have been induced upon people and they have been backed by law. That damage needs to be repaired. If, if we as a country, as a people, black, white, um, uh, you know, the color, yellow, red, whatever you wanna do, the color of nation, everybody's voice is, is like, we need to have like a remote with batteries, new batteries from, from the heavens. And these batteries need to be pointed at our people so that everybody can unmute themselves and tell their story, especially women. Because if, if we're not allowed to speak our special truth, if we're not allowed to bring our positives, bring our negatives, bring our dreams, bring our fears to the table, then you're not representing the whole of the people. So how are you going to be our leaders and, and rulers in a democratic place and you're not representing what the people around you want and need? So with, with that being said, Juneteenth to me, because we do things a little different here, but Juneteenth to me means that we have to be able to, 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 to self-define, self-create. We have to be able to control the narrative in 2021. 2020 has showed us clearly who everybody is. We don't need no more explanations. Ray Charles, Steve Wonder, all of them see exactly what's happening. Ray, <laughs> Stevie Wonder here, that's why I'm talking about going Yeah. So, so we, we already see who is who, right? The key now is for let's let's good people work together. And here, here's the key. We don't, we don't want to get caught inside of racial games either, because as people were getting emancipated, even people who were escaping slavery in the South, there are people who came from Europe, Europeans if you want to call them, or European Americans, who were the ones who were helping the Black Americans get free. There were European Americans all throughout this whole underground railroad, Grand Island, Lewiston, all of those places. It wasn't black people alone who was doing this. It was, it was the help, you know, for lack of a better, it was black and white people working together to free everybody. So, so, so this whole aspect of, of, because realistically, black people, white people all want the same thing. They want to have nice music, nice food, nice house. The key is that we should all just want it for each other. It doesn't, it doesn't demean you to want good for other people. Amen. As a matter of fact, you, you get a greater gratification when you help other people reach their, their heights and their greatness. Come on now. <laughs> yep. so, so, so don't get caught into the racial issue either. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a racial thing, but it's about making sure that everybody have access to being their best self. And anything that binds or fetters them from being their highest potential, that's that's going against God. That's unnatural. Everybody has has been given talents and 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 special things that they bring to the world. And the world is going to be better when everybody is allowed and encouraged to be their best self. So if laws got to be changed, damn it, they got to be changed. If systems got to be changed, they got to be changed. If they don't want to change, they're going to have to be removed. Because now everyone is seeing clearly. One thing that took place also is that during this COVID-19, everyone was forced to be at home and everybody's at home doing what? Watching social media, watching TV, watching the computer or the phone, right? Everybody, mm -hmm. right. So everyone was forced to watch what was happening with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor over and over and over. It's not just black people. Now, black people have been watching this for like 402 years. And what happens is, Everyone else is like, whoa, I know that I don't think like that. And, and most people, most, most, most white people are saying, wait a minute, I didn't realize it was really that bad. Like, I don't think that way. Me and my friends don't think that way, but I didn't realize it was this many people who really are thinking that way. I heard you all say that you all, you know, get arrested by police, but I didn't know that the police are responsible yeah. for a whole lot of the overt problems that are happening in all communities. I didn't know that the police would be the ones who would be some of the main ones leading a revolt on the Capitol or, or elected officials from our city and state and county governments would be the ones on the Capitol trying to make sure that, that we don't have a voice. I, I, I wouldn't believe in the 21st century that in a place like Georgia, maybe that you know, all these people will be so hell-bent on saying that they want you know, people to vote and then they want to make sure they take away the votes that come from the black neighborhoods for some reason. That's going back to what took place in the, in the 1800s, when they began to change the rules as black people were first allowed to vote. And they saw that election, like, wait a minute, maybe we need to get poll taxes. Maybe we need to have poll tests. And what's the test? Uh, guess how many jelly beans in this jar? Stuff like that. You, you, have to, you have to understand history. And young people have to realize yeah. and talk with adults now 
so that we realize the importance of voting. Because here's here's a, here's another underestimated thing. I'm gonna leave. With this. Amen. It all deals with June. Mm-hmm. One of the most powerful voices on earth right now is the voice coming out of woman's mouth. And 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 with the strong power that has been uh, 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 visualized through uh, pretty much white males, like in America, um, the how dare you challenge me attitude. Not just black women, white women too. White women was more poor, uh, oppressed than black women at that time. But um, this aspect of this male dominancy, this white male dominancy, um, it's, it's caused a problem for everybody. Not <laughs> it's caused a problem for everybody. But what is what is also taking place is the last person who they expect to talk back to them is going to be a black woman. Uh-huh. For some reason in history, people underestimated people like Stacey Abrams. People underestimated people like the mayors in many of these cities, and they underestimated that everyday ghetto people would rise again and save America. Because you know, America was mm-hmm. one time to be America. A black man is the first person who shed their blood for this country's independence. His name is Christmas Attic. Every war that America has fought, black people have sacrificed themselves. They come back home and they're still not treated better than your local pet. All right. So uh-huh. once again in the 21st century, in the year 2020, black people just saved America again. Why? Because we know that it, uh, more than uh, 90% of black women voted for the, uh, that president administration, Biden-Harris, and about 80 plus percent of black males, young males too, voted for Biden-Harris. And demographics way south once you adjust the melanin line. The, 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 the Hispanic community voted a little bit more for Biden-Harris and the European or the white uh, community, because remember, what is something like uh, seven million votes uh, was a deciding factor in this country for the election, correct? So if pretty much all of the black people yep. and most of the Latinx people voted for Biden-Harris, that means that the majority of, of non-black people all voted for Trump. So the only way that people with this family or want good for everybody mind is gonna work, we all gotta work together. That's why it can't be a racial thing. Yep. Even though the majority of the people on the other side have a heavy race uh, commonality. So people wanted to, they telling people to vote, to vote, to vote. And then they saying, well, we want to, we want to, we want to stop these people in these communities from voting. We, we don't, we don't need the votes from the inner city. We don't need no Pittsburgh votes. We don't need no votes in Philadelphia. We don't need no votes out of Atlanta either. And we might need to check the votes in all of the cities where the blacks and the Hispanics are. Are you watching what's happening? So while you're clapping your hands, they already got 47 states already setting up legislation to remove it right now. Yeah. But it's the power of women and community organizing, which is looking and trying to impress upon freedom for all that has kept us in the fight like we have for the last few decades. Juneteenth mean that we have to control a narrative. We have to learn it properly. We have to be re-educated. Here we are. And that's where Sankofa days came from. That same thought. Man, did we not just get a word? Yeah. And let the church say amen. Amen. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. And, you know, I was, as so many things came through my head as we listened to that. And I think one of the biggest things that he said was us aligning and us being allies that this isn't just a black movement it's a it's a everybody movement and you know as he said it's about knowing your history because you know post-slavery you know for a few decades post-slavery it was just poor people aligned no matter what those poor people looked like if they were black or if they were white we were aligned against the planetary elite which are now what we call the one percent and you know it was that disruption in the force where that planner elite said, hey, no, you're like us. You look like us. And they divided and conquered. And that's when, you know, we started going into the Jim Crow era and the things like that. So, you know, when I think of Juneteenth, it's, it's a time for everybody to finally unite and celebrate real freedom. Because that's when everyone was free. In a country that bases itself on freedom, it wasn't until that point when they rolled down to Texas, it wasn't until that point that all of us were free. One of the things we did last year in Buffalo's Juneteenth, we worked with the banks. Anybody might want to take some notes. 
anybody who's willing to sponsor some things, I think one of the greatest intergenerational conversations we could have is where do we go from here, chaos or community, is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's last book. Martin Luther King was leaving civil rights. Mm -hmm. He was focusing on equitable rights for all. He was talking about uniting poor people all over. He was talking about equal and fair yep. Talking about equal accessibility. He also was talking about America paying a debt that they owe to people that they did not back. He said that we have been given a check mark insufficient funds. So he was pretty much on the yeah. record. This book, he wrote it on the island of Jamaica, on the north coast of Jamaica, 1967. A year after this book came out is when he was assassinated. Within a year of this book is when he was assassinated. The book has been out of print for 10 years. It's called Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos. Oh, man. And I think that it would be a, it's a very good intergenerational conversation because it can spark this generation, college generation, post-college generation, professional generation, elders, ancients. Everybody can have something to, to add because the Martin Luther King in this book is not the, the guy who was dreaming. This is a total different narrative going on. Every, everyone, and that is so true, right before the year before he got assassinated, and just like our brother Malcolm, right before they got assassinated, they had these turn of events. They started thinking differently, saying different things. And they even started to begin, their messages began to align. And that was just, that was, that was, yeah. So I think that was yeah. very nice. Not every time I we broke it up over about those year. leaders. Yeah. We broke it up over a whole year and yeah. we worked with the university and the community. So that everybody kind of like just focus on a chapter. We asked the churches to talk about it a little bit. You know, you don't have to rearrange your schedule, but it just became a conversation in newspapers. Different people were talking about it. Schools were talking about it because it's going to lead you to, to try to find out more background information. Well, Grandma, what what were you doing when Martin Luther King was alive? Well, when Martin Luther King was alive, yeah. I didn't hear that. What were you doing when he was alive? Well, I just heard about him. Uh, I was born three years after he was killed and I just heard about him. Well, I studied him in school. I studied nonviolence when I was studying politics or I was at the Black and Puerto Rican caucus. We always reference what, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. everybody has a different reference point. And as we begin to add these stories up, it begins to make more sense, especially with the context of history. Sometimes when you look at history without understanding the context, it throws you off. That's why music and art is needed. Yeah. Music and art put your mind and spirit back into place. When you hear a change is going to come, you just like freeze. Because now you think about Malcolm X. You, if you watch uh -huh. the night in Miami, you know how close Malcolm X and Sam Cooke and Muhammad Ali and Jim Brown were. Now you're realizing how oh, deep and how serious that song is. There's a, there's a book called, uh, there's a, a documentary called King in the Wilderness. And it's talking about King's last year of his life. And, it, and it, it's like a parallel to this book. You can see it on YouTube. Uh -huh. That was a great amount of reference material that people can look up and uh, uh, acquire for themselves yeah. and great educational information that we implore you to just go take a look, see, learn for yourself, ask, seek, not on, and you will find the information um, that you probably never grew up with or didn't have. Um, and, and if nothing else, let that be a part of your portfolio of of information uh, gathering so that you have that as a tool. Um, but I, I thank you so much for that. And I just wanna give anybody a, uh, a chance to ask a question, but also to acknowledge the fact that our sister, Jamisha Harris, Alderwoman Harris has joined us. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule because we know um, how, how crazy our schedules are this week, but I totally thank you for um, taking this time to be able to join us. Did you have any questions and wanted to open it up for anyone online or anyone on the panel that has questions? I'm ready for questions if you have any. <laughs> Jamisha, you have any questions? I think she said she'll be right back. Not sure, but she did join us. Um, so I'm sure she'll jump in any moment now. Um, I want to congratulate you all for um, standing up and, and, and working together to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. Because like popcorn, this is happening all over America. Um, <laughs> I'm on calls every day with cities from all over that are talking and communicating about Juneteenth. People are saying, hey, the mayor called and asked us to we raise the red, black, and green flag. What to tell him? I said, yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there are things happening now that, that are happening at it. We're like we're in the quickening, like in the Bible, it's talking about the quickening or in that day. We're in a quickening time, like right now, 
Um, you know, people are dreaming dreams, having visions. You know, we're, we're in that day in the Bible. For those who, who read the Bible and see different chapters and they keep saying in that day and in that time, but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Joel, yes. Joel, yes. 20, Joel 2 and 28. Yeah. Yes. And I think I think I just want to say, like, as a community, being in the Black community, especially here, sometimes, you know, we, we all have a common goal. And I think that this is another reason why this Juneteenth is we all have a common goal, but we did we weren't getting there together. And what this has allowed us to do is to get to Juneteenth and to get to come together to organize this great event, to see one another, to see our different organizations. And as many times as some of us may have butted heads or whatever it was, we're now here like standing tall, standing proud together, like ready to show our community this, this beautiful display of who we are and of our culture. So like, I just want to take the time to tell Miss Sharon, Talena, Jamisha, like we have been spearheading this. Like, I just want to take the time to like recognize them and to tell them like, I can't them and when we sat down at the table we didn't know what was going to happen and some people you know they dropped out of the race but we just kept pushing and I think that that's the spirit that we need to replant in our community is to come together to be one and to create beautiful things right and to educate our children and to let our children gain knowledge and see what the future is going to be you know, with that said, um, when the gentleman said, go to Genesis, I went to Genesis and I found that verse that you talked about. And it's an awesome verse and two verses. But as I was turning in the Bible to find that, I found a, a poem that my daughter wrote back in the eighth grade. And it said, I bow my head and pray. My ancestor came across with shackles on their feet and hands, traveling from their own homes to far and distant lands. Not even, not ever packing their bag or feeling excitement in their heart, but resenting, wondering, and worrying about their new start. The master whipped them regularly whenever something went wrong. The name slave doubled them, but they continued to sing their song. Sometimes days were long and hot or mainly long and cold. Family were constantly separated when loved ones were sold. Time grew hard, were harder still. But my molested colored people never gave up their will. They continue to strive for freedom and never ask the Lord why, knowing that one day their soul will rise up and fly. I'm proud of my ancestors because they taught me a lot. They showed me that sometimes you have to fight for what you got. Time may still get hard and sometimes the scourge make my way. But just as my ancestor did, I bow my head and pray. Yes, I bow my head and pray. And that's what Juneteenth means to me. Yes. Yes. She, came from an eighth, um, she was in the eighth grade wow. when she written this poem. And she just graduated with her master's at Wesley College. So, you know, mm -hmm. I have to go way back when we talk about enslaved people, because you know, in bondage. And that's why I say our young people need to know our history. Because there's so much, especially Newburgh, is rich. 75% of African Americans used to live here in this town. So we have to continue talking the talk, walking the walk, and telling people about our history. And those who don't know need to pick up a book and start reading it and learning for themselves. And don't be afraid to ask a question if they need answers. That's my soul right there, because I feel like preaching. <laughs> um, so I just want to bring really briefly um, go over, you know, our humble beginnings as we've kind of told you, and then what we had in store for this year's Juneteenth and how all of that amazingly tied into the, the lesson that you just gave us and all of what Buffalo's doing. And we pale in comparison to the size of your festival and all that you guys have been able to accomplish. But we come in with the same mighty heart and integrity to educate people and to give them the resources and, and to help elevate our quality of life 
uh, while we toil on this soil that we ultimately pay taxes to be here for. So um, we, like they said, um, over the years, it's just grown a little bit, little bit, kind of trickled in uh, support at the time. Um, and then this year in March, we gave a presentation to um, the board of aldermen and the mayor and just kind of let them know what our expectations or aspirations were for Juneteenth. We didn't even know if we could do it because of COVID. We weren't sure what was gonna happen. We went in planning this thing, but not sure if the good Lord was gonna shower us with rain during the hurricane season, cause that's hurricane season for us. It uh, starts in June. Um, is it the end of May or it's- it's June the, when Yeah, we're hurricane season. So it's always hit or miss around that time. Um, and we just went into it with faith. We just knew something in our DNA said that this was going to work, but you're going to have to work. <laughs> so we set forth the task of at least presenting um, something to the city, which is um, aired. So we knew that we weren't just talking to an audience of seven individuals on a board, but we were talking to our city and almost putting out an action call that this is what we want to do. So, you know, let's let's do it. And we pre we uh, ended it with asking them to consider to make it a holiday in the city, uh, or especially for its diverse city employees who could really um, appreciate the uh, support that uh, the city could offer them in that aspect. So we wanted them to be diverse and equitable and we just asked um, you know, the city to support and to help us. But it was really a call to our community and through our community, um, through you know, people donating their lunch money all the way to you know, our, our sponsorships that came from nowhere. I mean, we know where they came from, but it just seemed that you know, they just you know, materialized when we had nothing, when we had zero dollars, no budget, no nothing, just how are we going to make this happen? Because we know that everything that we need is right here in our community. We know that regardless of whether or not we're going through a pandemic or, you know, hurricane season, we know that everything that we need to succeed is right here. So once we started hosting twice a week, community meetings, anybody can come, everybody can come. Um, we saw the magic begin to happen. And we saw, you know, people just really pull together to form this multicultural, educational, edutainment, um, you know, all of these days. So it started with an art walk from our Craven Arts Council and Gallery um, and the Bank of the Arts, which featured some great pieces by local African-American artists. Um, one of the best displays that we've had ever, I think it was just, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and that is still um, available uh, until the end of June. You can still go and see it. Um, also, we have the uh, Crockett Miller Slave Quarters here that is right by our airport that is available for free tours. Um, we have that information available on our website, but that was available, that's available anytime and especially during Juneteenth. Um, we also had from Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the Sankofa Musical Review. And for anyone that got to see that, it was an amazing treat. And I hate to keep using the same word over and over again, but what else can you define it as other than celestial, amazing, uh, a phenomenal, um, just the way that all of this organically just came together. Um, Angelina Doyle, thank you, the executive director at the Newburgh Civic Theater for having that conversation with me after I had a conversation with one of the members of Juneteenth Buffalo. Um, about what Sankofa means because we were celebrating Sankofa days before we even knew it was named Sankofa days. So when we got that, or at least when I had that conversation, that light bulb went off and I said, that's confirmation right there that we're doing what we were supposed to do, that we were following a blueprint that we had not even seen, but we felt it and we knew that this is what we were supposed to do. So um, Angelina, that play, the review, the poems, the singing, strange fruit, 
oh, to see and hear the way that they put on Strange Fruit and the dancing. Um, it was amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, we hope to have hope. I hope to see it again soon. Maybe an encore performance uh, or next year be even bigger and better. Um, maybe, you know, Miss Sharon, if we can find a way to, to tie in, even try on Palace here to make it even bigger and more grand than ever. I, you know, however that works, I'm just throwing out suggestions. I'm not telling anybody what to do. But I propose that we might have to do artists that we might have to maybe send some of our artists there and maybe you need to send some artists here so we can share the experience. Yes. We yes. would love to. And especially, I will send you the picture of the Sankofa stage decor. They had a local artist named Seven. You kind, you guys really favor each other. You remind me, uh, his name is Kevin Bryant and he painted all of the Sankofa signs on a, a map of Africa. Um, and it was the bird, he painted the bird reaching back and he explained everything that you just said. He explained that at the beginning of the musical. Um, so I'm super happy to see that, that just this project altogether, if you guys can understand how it shines a great light on all of the people that are involved, how they become blessed by what's going on for Juneteenth because Kevin Bryant is a hurricane survivor from Florence. I mean, you talk about people who lost their homes, who got flooded out, who had experienced some of the hardest of hard times, you know, um, just the, uh, not having resources. Kevin is the comeback kid. If anybody ever <laughs> runs into Kevin Bryant, who also is a coach for the YGU Bears, um, please shake that man's hand listen to some of the things that he has to say he is very brilliant in his own right and he loves talking about our history our rich history and looking to the stars for our you know our answers and he's just rich with knowledge so um and he paints you know he paints beautiful pictures so um we i'd love to for you two to link up that'd be great um but so that that was um like I said, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Sunday morning, we linked up with uh, Trinity uh, Chapel on Broad Street, which is in uh, along the corridor where our vendors, we will have that street shut down for the Juneteenth Festival on Saturday. But uh, at that church, they set up outside, they had refreshments for everyone, and they gave a beautiful sermon about Juneteenth and about our history and about where we came from, but where we have yet to go. And if you did not catch that, look on our Facebook page. It was done by a black woman pastor. As you talk about knowledge coming out of women's mouths, that it's confirmation again, that, that this, this all organically came together for a reason. So uh, we thank Trinity Chapel for being a supporter of Juneteenth and, um, Please go, go by there if you can for a service uh, and, and have your mind and your third eye open to a lot more than what your average sermon will give you. I promise you. Um, so today was our kickoff podcast where we told everybody about the history of Juneteenth and what it meant to um, you know each one of our cities and how it all connects to let people know that we're not just in these silos of information or you're not feeling this alone. You're not going through this alone. We are all in this together. And um, this is what Juneteenth, you can see how Juneteenth brings that all together. You know, a lot of times in cities, the defining line is downtown, uptown. And even in something like a small town like New Bern, we, you know, that can be a roadblock, a stumbling block to uh, block to progress a lot of times. But Juneteenth, we have 10 days of events uptown and downtown for young and for old, um, you know, black or white and everything in between. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we're sharing our time, talent and treasures with each other towards a greater purpose. And that's what really what the spirit of Juneteenth is all about. So um, tomorrow we will have uh, our health and wellness day. Um, one of our uh, Juneteenth sponsors is BrainTap Technologies. Uh, that is where I work, my nine to five. And I am willing to uh, help anyone with BrainTap demos tomorrow, just some meditation to relax or de-stress or help them get through the day. Um, just, you know, hit me up or, um, 
you know, send me a private message. If it's not something that you want to put out there that you just, you, you're having a hard time because trust me, you're not alone around these times. So um, let me know as well as at 6 p.m. We have Zumba, or excuse me, we have uh, Fit Friends on Deck who will be working out at Fort Totten Park. So the entire community is invited. It's all free. You guys go out there. It's a group of people who typically work out anyway. It's a communal group that just naturally came together. And they are open in their group as well to uh, anybody in the community. They want you to know more about them and that you can come and work out and, and uh, have a good time as well with Fit Friends on Deck. And that is ran by Vincent McDuffie. At 7 p.m., we will have Zumba. Now, just depending on the rain, we're not sure, but Zumba will either be at the park. If it's raining, it will be at the flame with Kayla Ingram and K-Zone Fitness. So um, check out our page just for updates to let you know what's happening, where it's all weather dependent. So uh, after that, on Wednesday at 6 p.m., we have HBCU Day. And we have HBCU grads who will be speaking with um, families, children, um, whoever would like to come. They have a presentation that they will have at um, The Village, which is on Broad Street, which is the building owned by um, Tammy Dean and uh, Life uh, Edward Dean. Edwin, excuse me, Edwin, please don't kill me life because we serve together as Marines. So, um, and he will also be performing at our rooftop party. I want him to get mad at me before we get to there. But uh, they have, uh, if you didn't know, it's at 1046 Broad Street. It's a beautiful building called The Village. And that is, um, it's still in the works, but it's gonna be a great communal place as well for us going forward, especially Yes, uh, for, for these types of events. Wendy, do you have a question? I, I do, or and I hate to interrupt, but um, on the last podcast, we talked about the schedule and it came up. There was, there's people that don't know what HBCU is. So can you please say that so our listeners will... Um, Thank you. Ms. Sharon, take it away. Historical Black College University, HBCU. And can you talk a little bit about uh, HBCUs in, in, in North Carolina? And I, I apologize, I wanna give the title Miss Sharon. The reason why I keep going to her is because she is the African-American uh, history uh, coordinator, outreach, coordinator. outreach coordinator for Tryon Palace. I apologize, I messed it up, but you know I love you and I'm there anytime you need me. <laughs> <laughs> so our HBCUs, uh, most people don't understand it initial what it means, but it is still the historical black colleges. And we have anti-university, uh, anti we have Central, we have Edmund State, I mean, we got Greensboro, they're all over. So we try to get our students to apply to these certain uh, schools because there are a lot of scholarships out there for them. And so that they can be aware of what these HBC youth have to offer. Thank I'm not, you. I'm not an HBCU graduate, but I am an Aggie daddy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go Andy Pye, North Carolina. Yes. <laughs> um, so we we will have uh, Miss Ramona Green, who is an HBCU graduate, uh, Mr. Torrance Williams, um, and uh, Nicholas Green as well, to have a presentation at the Village at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. You don't want to miss it, especially if you're interested in learning about the history of HBCUs. Please take your children, to take take everybody, and just go on there. And um, we will also be providing refreshments for that as well. Um, so that's Wednesday. Thursday is Miss Sharon's day. Sharon's day. <laughs> Would you like to tell us about your program that you have going on Thursday? Because I understand that. Uh, one of the key topics or key threads in a lot of what we have going on is education, educating and awakening people to the history and what's going on around us. So please tell us. Well, that's the important part, educate, educate, educate. So on Thursday night at 7 p.m., we are doing a virtual, because of the pandemic, we decided to do it virtual. Uh, when I, uh, very own Angela Thought will be coming to us to give you some meat, some bread and some potatoes and a little dessert on the side to educate you about Juneteenth, where it came from, how it got started, the whole nine yards. So we're asked that you register 
by emailing Crystal Everich at ncdcr.gov or by calling 252-639-3512 or 252-639-3592. Leave your name, your phone number, and your email address, and we'll get back with you and give you the call for Thursday night. You can't miss this because this is the bread, the meat, the potatoes, and the gravy. I know all about that and collard greens, some chickens, <laughs> the potatoes, and the sweet potato pies. So come on and join us on Thursday night at 7 p.m. You're going to miss a treat if you're not joining us. Yay. Yes. And can we mention that the entire time all of this has been going on, we've also had a Juneteenth lawn decoration contest going on for anybody who may or may not be able to get out to some of these events, which I don't understand how you can't get out the webinar unless you have suddenly inside joke for Newburn. Um, terrible <laughs> <laughs> but um, please uh, participate in the lawn decoration contest. Uh, grand prize is $100 cash prize for the best lawn decorated for Juneteenth, um, as well as go ahead, what you said, Ashley? The essay contest, two hundred words, dollars for yeah. the youth. Tell us what means to them. Um, and a hundred dollars, I believe it is for second place. Yes, a hundred dollars for second and fifty dollars for third. And all the kids have. Yes, you will also all one hundred words, right? Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. Two hundred for two hundred. Two hundred dollars for two hundred. And you get free books as well. Um, and this was sponsored by the Democratic Women of Craven County. We went and picked up those books today. You can yeah. see books in there such as The Crow. They're all age appropriate too as well. But um, you have Becoming. You have um, the Barack Obama uh, memoir. You have uh, some James Baldwin stuff. You have On Juneteenth. Um, they have looked at Amazon's diverse reading list for youth under 17. And they had donors go on and purchase the books. And we had over, well over a hundred books donated to us for this festival that we will be giving away, not only as part of the essay contest, but we have um, little games and stuff like uh, three-legged races and potato sack races and kinds of intramural sports and things we got going on. We may even just see your child walking around and give them a book because we just really believe in educating our youth and, and getting them engaged and involved. They may look at you like, who, oh, Papa, who is this strange one? Why is she giving me this book? Um, but you'll read it. You might want to read it because now you're interested. Now you want to know why was this given to you? Why did the universe give it to you? Because we want to get resources to our youth. And what better way than to partner with some local organizations to make it happen? Um, so thank you to the Democratic Women of Craven County for their uh, donations. And thank you so much to Oscars Mortuary. Uh, for the $100 cash prize for the lawn decoration contest. And if no one knows what Oscar's Mortuary is, it is a black owned uh, funeral home here in New Bern and um, owned by a family, two, two brothers, or is it Ms. Sherry? You oh, know about that? Native New Bernians. The Dove, the whole family. The, the whole Dove family. brothers and the whole, all the Doves. <laughs> um, so we thank you. They have always been supportive of our business expos and several of the other um, things that happen around our community. And, and especially Victor Dove, who was just um, elected to the Board of Education um, Board. So thank you so much. And we are still accepting essays. Don't care what you read. We still gonna read them until Friday night. So that's okay. We got a couple teachers on our side that are reading through that. Um, and we will uh, make the announcement of the winners on the main stage at the Juneteenth Festival on Saturday. So exciting. Yes. Um, and then we have Friday night is the only ticketed event. Oh no, because Sankofa was ticketed too. But another, um, we try to make everything free as much as possible. But there are some things with nonprofits and things that we work with that they are just worth sewing into, putting a little skin in the game when it comes to the economic uh, progress of our community. And uh, a lot of that is helping our local nonprofits. So the Young Urban Professionals of Eastern North Carolina is having their third annual uh, rooftop 
Juneteenth celebration. And that is going to be at 401 Middle Street or 405, just depends on which side of the law firm you're on. But it is on the uh, rooftop of Oliver and Chi. <laughs> Um, one of our good friends, George, who is uh, a current uh, constant guest on Wendy's Pod Squad on Thursdays on New Bern Now, um, was gracious enough to allow us to utilize his building, not only this year, the rooftop, which we've had before, but also the parking lot. So we will be able to fit more than 49 people at our event this year safely and socially distanced. So please come out. It is a great chance to network. There are economics going on because as you know, Younger Professionals is about um, building businesses, especially in our marginalized communities and about resources to help us help you grow your business. When we say young urban professionals, we don't mean young age. We mean um, whether you are new to business, you know, new to social media marketing, new to the, the ways of today and the technology of today, we are here to assist and help you grow your business. Or, or business idea, or if you're just a young professional in a, in, a, in a profession and you want to learn how to be more professional, whatever that is that we can assist you with, we will stand in the gap. We will try to build opportunities for our community and we will continue to work with um, everyone in our community to um, get those necessary resources to those communities that need it most. So we're not saying that all communities or all businesses don't matter. We're just saying that some businesses and our economic family are not receiving as much assistance or resources as everyone is. So we are pinpointing our sources and our services to those businesses that need us the most. And that um, is really what we're about. And we're going to have food by none other than um, Smoke from the Flame, which is uh, the new president. Uh, yeah, the Chamber of Commerce. He also happens to be another prominent minority businessman in this area. Um, so Chef Smoke, we thank you for providing the food for this event, as well as DJ Chaos from 101.9 Kiss FM uh, will be our DJ for the night. Um, and we will may or have a few spoken word poets who would grace the, um, the event with their uh, amazing talent, one of which we talked about was Brother Life. And if anyone doesn't know Brother Life, please look him up on YouTube. Um, he is a, a life coach. He is a spoken word poet. Um, if you ever remember seeing the Marine who went viral around 9-11, he was standing again in his uniform against a Marine Corps flag in the back. And he spoke a powerful poem that went viral and really touched a lot of people. Um, and ever since then, Brother Life has been on fire. Um, he is currently a part of the mentoring group for uh, Derek Grace. If anyone has looked up Derek Grace Academy, um, you can find Brother Life as you know, someone that is associated and a team member on there, but also just, you know, locally, the things that he's done, the foster children that him and his wife have taken in, um, the, the mentor that he continues to be. Um, he is someone that if you don't know who he is, please get well acquainted um, because he is life-changing. And some of the speeches that he gives these children all over the United States, I've seen him in classes in California and, and just everywhere. He goes to street corners and he speaks his poetry and he speaks life into people. Um, so I guess that's why his name is life. <laughs> I don't know, but um, we thank him for it. And um, hopefully he's able to grace our stage uh, Friday night. But also for nothing else, we will have a section called What's the Buzz? And that is sponsored by Buzzy Stubbs, who is our title sponsor for this event. Um, and in What's the Buzz, you can create a small commercial or some content for your business that you can then take with you, that you can then um, let everyone know what it is that you do and what your business does. And for, the, for that is so vital to young businesses who need content to get out there, to let people know that their business is here. So we wanna be able to provide that for people and we want to be able to provide an opportunity to spotlight you and your and your talents. So whatever your buzz is, whatever you want to tell us about, come on up to the rooftop party and let us know. And we have a few giveaways and things too that we'll be doing there as well. Sorry to be long-winded, but I'm almost getting to the end of the 10 days, I promise. Um, so that's Friday night. Make sure you get your ticket on Eventbrite. Um, Saturday. Let's just talk about Saturday. 
can, <laughs> can we raise a hand in faith for Saturday? Because we have so much going on um, that that I, I really just need to probably rush through and tell you, but I want to take my time and just make sure everyone hears what I am saying so that you have no reason to tell us why you're not coming because we have something for everyone to come out and celebrate. So at 10 a.m. on the corner of Broad and Roundtree, we will have the historical signs dedication ceremony for the 16 signs that are going up in the Duffy Field community to tell the history of that rich black community or my, you know, minority community. So they will have that dedication ceremony first thing in the morning, 10 a.m. You don't wanna miss that. Um, and that is free to the community as well. Just show up and learn more about the, this walking tour that you can take through this community um, with these signs. They are going to be um, a, a, a huge highlight for uh, that community. So I thank Mr. Bernard George for letting uh, us know more about that and being a part of it. He is also a part of the U.S. Colored Troops. Is that correct, Ms. Sharon? That's right. So that's how all of that comes together. Because as we know, Ms. Sharon being um, the author of a lot of history around here, or, or at least the orator, to be able to tell us more about our history. She is also the leader of the pack when it comes to our local uh, US Colored Troop Division that's here. And um, she travels all over to take them uh, to perform in different places like DC and, and Lord knows where else. I, where you at this week, Ms. Sharon? Um, well, y'all got me tied up with Juneteenth, so we can't go nowhere. But Talena, I also want to mention another group that we do at Prime Palace is called the, the uh, John Canoe. Yes. Group, which is a West African celebration where the enslaved people came from Africa. So we tell that story the only day that the enslaved people got to do what they want to do and how they were able to sing and dance and tell this story and talk about the master right in front of him, him not even knowing what they was talking about. So we also have that group as well. Yes, thank you for bringing that up because a lot of folks at first, they didn't know the difference between John Canoe and Juneteenth, but they know now, thanks to Miss Sharon, she has been an ally in making sure that people understood the history of those two very important traditions that we have. So thank you for preserving that history and still uh, bringing it to the people uh, and, and making it intergenerational. You have a dance troupe. Uh, there are young and old that are on it. Um, and you do a great job of keeping it up with that. Yes, you do. So thank you. And um, please continue to do it, um, even though we can't pay you. I'm just saying. Just joking. <laughs> just joking. It's all good. Um, <laughs> educate, educate, educate. Indeed. Um, at 11 a.m., uh, our parade kicks off, and that will kick off from Stanley White, which we all know was our beloved gem that was flooded during Hurricane Florence and has now been um, leveled um, as it sits in limbo of what's going to happen next. So um, that was a significant place for us to start. It's the heartbeat of that community. So we start there. We line up there. We have the USCT, we have the, uh, our elders leading the front, which we learned from Buffalo. We have a golf cart for our elders who will lead the charge and be the tip of the spear um, as we <laughs> go on this walking Louisiana Mardi Gras style hey. program. <laughs> it's gonna go through the neighborhoods. So um, like I said, we have our USCT who will carry our colors. Then right behind them, we have the second Marine Air Wing ceremonial band. The entire band will be there as well. Um, and we are excited about having them. And then uh, we have local businesses and local community activists. And I mean, Mr. Jomo, you know, um, just a, a plethora and kaleidoscope of all of the beautiful individual talents in this town that come together to form the, what New Bern is, the essence of New Bern. Um, and there are people who couldn't make it out and that's perfectly fine. We'd love um, to, to see people on the sidelines who may not have wanted to participate or been able to, but who would just come out and support what we're trying to do. The unity that you will see in this, in this line of uh, people who have come to celebrate Juneteenth. Because I was getting ready to say New Bern citizens, but they're not all from you know, uh, uh, New Bern. We have people coming from all over the place. Um, we just announced last 
tonight on the Juneteenth website that we have UN Ambassador Sylvia Pristil that's going to come and, and pray unity and peace over our city. And she typically goes everywhere and woke up one night and says that God told her to come to New Bern. All right. <laughs> so she will be here. And that, that yeah, that in itself is an, an amazing feat. So um, we will kick off that at 11 o'clock. That will snake up Third Avenue, left on Broad Street, past all of our vendors, past our kids' corner with our inflatables, and uh, make a left on Round Tree. And that will end in the heart of the big field, which is in the heart of Craven Terrace Housing Projects. And we that is where our main stage will be at for all of our performances. That is also where our basketball pickup games will be at, as well as um, we will have games, adult life-size games and spades and dominoes and, and chess and checkers and everything set up um, where you can bring out your blankets and your lawn chairs, come into the big field and enjoy the entertainment that's gonna be on the stage, our African drum circles and everything. Um, we have people that are rapping, we have an electric guitar soloist and <laughs> just a, a, an array of other um, entertainment that you will see. We'll put that schedule out right before uh, the festival. But um, we also have, again, the festival starting between at 12 o'clock. All the festival activities start at 12 o'clock. Uh, the festival will be in three separate locations. It will be in the heart of the big field, which I just explained. We will have a kid's corner at Broad and uh, Roundtree. Uh, it's actually next to the Master Cuts Barbershop, that, that uh, grass park that's between the barbershop and the Shriners Temple. Um, that will be the kid's corner with inflatables and jelly ball, and I think we got a dunk tank coming and some other things over there. We have a pet and zoo across the street and along Round Tree, we will have a chalk art contest from Color Fest. So um, you guys can go over there and there's a free for all section for anyone that just wants to draw and be creative and imaginative. And there's also um, the contest section will be taped off. There will be face painting there as well. Um, the community center at Craven Terrace will be the volunteer central. It, also there, you will be able to get vaccinations. Um, so if you need your vaccination, uh, you can find them in there. We won't find out the two brands until the morning of. Um, down there, we will also have a library mobile down Round Tree where you can go and look at books and get books. The Havelock Library will be there and RCS will also be there giving away food boxes. Um, we will have free food for our volunteers in the volunteer center. Um, We'll have refreshments for breakfast in the morning, and then we'll have some hot food throughout 12, um, 12 to 8. Um, I'm trying to think. We will also have our vendors along Broad Street and then uh, Stanley White at Henderson Park, which is our third location. We will have a football combine and all of our intramural sports for the kids. Um, it's, it's pretty much a free-for-all. Our wow. A blood drive. Thank you. Alderman Harris, thank you. We will have a blood mobile there. That All of that blood will stay local, which we understand is, a, again, low blood transfusions and things like that. Needs to sign up for this blood mobile. Um, not just because they're going to give you a $20 gift card for doing it, but for the simple fact, again, it saves lives. It saved the life of one of our panelists, uh, Alderman Harris. So, please know that it is important. And if you can, please give blood. It just, it please means Please donate. We need blood. Please donate. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. We will have uh, music. Ms. Shannon, am I missing anything else? I know we got a lot going on, but I just tried to hurry up and run down everything because we're getting to, um, you know, close to the end here. So. No, the only thing you need to do uh, is talk about Sunday, the closeout of the event. Okay, but please don't forget to come to the Juneteenth Festival because y'all don't know how hard we work to, to partner with the city to get these fireworks at 9 p.m. So uh, we will have vendor tear down between 7.15 and 8 o'clock and then uh, fireworks will go off from Henderson Park where we talked about, you know, for those who know, that's where Stanley White is as well. Um, we have a t about 20 minute fireworks show. Um, and then we were very adamant about that for our children because Lord knows last year we had to run somewhere to get some and then do it. And 
like we said, just seeing the looks on the kids' faces who had probably never seen fireworks in their neighborhood uh, made us know or helped us to understand that this is something that we needed to do going forward. And we didn't care if we had to spend $5,000 for fireworks. We was going to get them fireworks and we wanted the same firework company sure enough. and things and quality that you guys use for the 4th of July city fireworks. That's the same thing that we want for this one because this is about all of us. <laughs> So, and we, we were able to get them and we are super happy because it was the community that came together to bring that um, to fruition for our children. So that's at nine o'clock after we've cleaned up, we've done our due diligence. Um, please enjoy the fireworks and then get home safely. There we go. There's going to be some other extra little things going on throughout the day. We don't want to give it all away because we want to be able to give you guys a treat, but um, and we will have postcards and things for people to be able to take stuff home. We will also have Juneteenth t-shirts that we'll be raffling off. And um, if anyone wants to buy an extra few, we'll have, we, we may have some, it just all depends on how many volunteers we get. Hopefully God will bless us to have so many volunteers. We don't have any shirts to raffle off, but um, if not, uh, we do have some and also some USCT shirts as well um, from our colored troops. Yeah, and I believe Autumn and Harris has something that she would like to say. Yes, please excuse me because my picture, I am not Zoom ready, but um, this just in, we have four tickets. Did you already tell them, Talena? No, I did not. I was We have four tickets available to the premier double-decker rooftop party Friday, June 18th. Starting at seven, ends at 10. And the way that you can get one of these tickets, I need to know a fact that you learned tonight from this amazing Zoom educational that you've learned podcast with New Burn Now and Project Restore and Miss Sharon with Tron Palace. You got an inbox, yup, and you have until nine o'clock. And they're going to verify if that's a true fact. I need four people to inbox young urban professionals right now with a fact and you have a chance to win your opportunity to the hottest event out there on Friday. That's all I wanted to say. Aw, well, thank, hey, thank you so thank much. Lord. This was good. Of course. Um, to round out our our uh, day, or excuse me, our week is Sunday. I mean, we couldn't round it out without having a worship session because we understand that this is a holistic approach to uh, a, a awakening and understanding about more history that you may not have known about. I'm pretty sure we have educated someone tonight on something that they didn't know about. So um, we've already done our job, but at the same time, we're not done with our assignment. And uh, that last day, Sunday, I believe everyone is in for a real treat. Um, we had already had our the Sunday prior as the Juneteenth message. Um, so this next Sunday is about, um, you know, praise and worship. You, you, you feel free, obviously, to go to your church, your, your church home or wherever you go to praise in the morning. But we have a 1 p.m. prayer walk that you can be involved in as well. There is a labyrinth being constructed in the parking lot of Broad Street Christian Church. Um, it will be up by then. And we will have Miss Bonita Sims singing um, some good hymns. And you can walk through this labyrinth and pray and um, really focus on, you know, centering yourself and what you, what kind of conversation you want to have with God and going forward or, you know, whom you worship. But we um, are excited to partner with Broad Street Christian Church on this. It is a moment to really have an intimate moment with God and talk about, you know, what you, what you are thankful for, um, or whatever you want to talk to God about. I know some people talk to God about their toothpaste flavor. I don't know, you know, but whatever relationship you have with him, um, that is an intimate time for you to be able to hear that music, like our brother was talking about, to reset and really, um, you know, meditate on what you are going to do going forward. So that's at 1 p.m. Broad Street Christian Church. Um, if anyone doesn't know where that church is, it is where you now see the unity hands, mm -hmm. the multicolored unity hand sculpture that was created, that was installed inside of that parking lot. So we are again promoting unity and peace and education. 
So, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, after that, at um, 5 p.m., we will have a gospel concert at the Omega Center. And uh, anybody who doesn't know the Omega Center, that is a historical building in our community. Uh, you can read the historical placard outside of that. That was the original Black Gym that they then used some of the bricks to uh, build uh, Stanley White. Is that correct, Ms. Uh, Sharon? The, our, our, the men in, our, uh, in that community went ahead and um, typically, you know how it was here. I'm here, I'm learning, Ms. Sharon. Y'all built everything brick masons and, you know, all those trades and skills that, you know, <laughs> a lot of our forefathers had, a lot of our kids don't even know about, but um, they will learn um, a lot of history at this festival and during this week. So I hope that they understand the importance of that. But um, at the Omega Center, Miss Benita Simmons will be at Tribe by Fire. We'll be having a gospel concert. And last but not least, at 7.30 p.m., we will have the Mayafa wrap-up a prayer at the water's edge at Union Point Park, because as we know or may not know, we will tell the history of the lynchings that took place right um, in that area. Or you can always just ask Miss Sharon. <laughs> so, so tell us a, a little bit of a reason why we chose that location. Well, there was a lynching here in New Bern that a lot of people are not aware of. But that is another way to call our ancestors' name and talk about the lynching that happened here. And then there's another way to educate you again of things that have happened around here in New Bern. Yes. We will also be taking the, um, we will have a memorial table at Juneteenth Festival on Saturday where people can go ahead and um, write a message to someone they may have lost in 20 and 21 or their ancestors period. And they can ring Wendy's bell that Wendy had been ringing to notify people of the deaths during COVID and our, was it our county, Wendy? Uh-oh. Yeah, it was, our, it was our county every Friday. And I, it's a ship's quarter deck bell. I should have had it as a prop. So okay. but you'll have it. We'll, we'll have it that day, so. Well, we thank you for it, for allowing us to utilize that to say people's names. And then you can say anyone's name, uh, but if you wanna ring the bell in honor and memoriam of your loved one that you may have lost um, during that time, you can do that as well as write their name on um, this table that we'll have. And we'll take those out to the water when we go for the Mayafa prayer on uh, Sunday. And in honor of your love, your lost loved one, we will also have uh, a small, you know, honor something honoring uh, the people in our area that we had lost last year and this year to include Ms. Sharon. Yes, um, the first person that we lost was Commissioner Johnny Sampson, who is a first cousin of mine's. Then we lost Miss Pepsi. That most people didn't know the African American model for Pepsi, which one of my favorite person, Miss Pat Frazier, Miss Lavonia Pat Frazier, whose husband was a civil rights lawyer here in New Bern, North Carolina, and he kicked butt. So I miss my friend because you know we wanted to tell her story. And the last person was, the uh, well, second person rather, was when we talked about the Dove Funeral Home is Sonny Dove, who uh, is well known in the community. His family is, uh, they are awesome. And we also, we just want to honor them because those are the three that we lost during COVID. Yes, ma'am. So um, we want to, again, pay homage to those that came before us who, who set the path for us to be able to do some of the things that we have done with our lives or whose blessings we had to walk through to get to where we are today. So uh, we thank all of them. And I wanted to give an opportunity for anyone to ask any questions um, to our guest as uh, well as to um, Jamie, you, you uh, popped in. So if you had any questions or, or last minute things that you wanted to say um, or, or talk about for the festival, um, feel free. Yeah, um, I just want to say I wasn't able to talk um, much, but I was here listening. And I just think it's beautiful just to see for you, Talena, just, you know, you set your heart on this when I first met you 
about organizing and just representing, you know, Juneteenth because we're both from New York. So we understand that. And it was something new for us and what, what we know of Juneteenth in New Bern. And you galvanized, you got Miss Sharon and you got the commission together and you have done an amazing job. And I just want to say thank you. It's so nice to be able to bring everything full circle. You worked hard and you got this representation of Juneteenth here. And sir, we appreciate all of the wisdom that you sold onto us and all the viewers. And they just see that it's why we're fighting and why we're so vocal and why it's so important. We're not saying no one's history isn't important, but we just want people to understand the full history and you've given that story and, and I'm sure marching orders for people to go and learn more because you can learn something every day and it's just beautiful to see everybody to come together. Um, we're so diverse and just to experience this and I'm really excited and again we hope to have you back. You have been a blessing to my soul and I just appreciate everybody and again up oh, there goes my sister too, Ashley you know, just everything. This this podcast is sorry, listen, y'all. Wendy, the platform. We appreciate you. It's this this was amazing, and it's going to get better each year. <laughs> so yes. thank you. Yes, Wendy, you are amazing. I follow you guys on Facebook all the way up in Brooklyn, New York, and I remember when I first started following you guys, it was probably around Florence. And I was like, who in the hell is writing this stuff? Like, it was, it was absolutely amazing. So, yes, thank you so very much. Thank you. And do you have any last save rounds, Ashley, as we kind of wrap up this thing and um, graciously thank our, our guests for coming? Uh, we don't want to take up anyone else's time. I know we said this is going to be an hour, but it got so good. And, and we had so <laughs> much to share. So um, I just want to provide everybody the time and space to be able to give some some um, last minute facts. You know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just thankful. Um, well, first of all, everybody sign up for Miss Sharon Lecture Series. <laughs> and by the way, let's start bigger, period. Start and let's start there. <laughs> And I just, you know, my my fifth grandmother was the one who brought us out of slavery here um, in New Bern. My great 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 grandmother Tamia, she brought us out of slavery. So, you know, here's where I was born. Here's where my roots are. I'm deeply invested in this place. I'm deeply invested in who we are um, as a people. Uh, you know, striving and surviving in New Bern, North Carolina. Like I've left, I've been gone for almost half my life, but I've never actually left New Bern. You know, my children return here every summer, you know, just to piggyback off of what our brother said about crossing that Mason-Dixon line. Every time I cross it with my children, I tell them, okay, now this is where we're going. We're, you know, now we're in Virginia. Like as soon as we cross that border, I'm telling them that every single time I'm saying that to them, that we have now crossed this Mason-Dixon line. Like now let's remember who we are. Let's remember, you know, that <clears throat> the standards that we have home you know, in Brooklyn, New York and Flatbush, Brooklyn among our Caribbean people are not the standards that you have here. And I, you know, as we say, Sankofa, looking back, I send them here so they'll always be able to look back. They're not going to look back on a city like they're going to look back on, you know, New Bern, North Carolina, and that I spent an enormous amount of time there and that I understand where my mother came from. I understand that we came out of, you know, we came out of slavery. My people did not move. You know, when I when I look at my family history, my people did not move. We stayed true to this coastline. So, you know, that's I'm just I'm just excited for everything. I'm excited for Saturday. I'm excited for the wealth of knowledge I gained. And I'm appreciative each of you women here who have gave them given me, you know, that throat to speak and that third eye to open and just all the wisdom that I need to intake into my body. I got it because of y'all. I appreciate y'all. Miss <laughs> um, Sharon, do you have any last words or anything that you want to say about Juneteenth Buffalo or Juneteenth and New Bern or anything Mr. Jomo has said tonight? First of all, I want to thank the brothers for bringing the message because that was powerful. And, you know, 
when we bring these festivals to the community, all we ask is that you attend them. You know, just come out and see what this, this committee had pulled together. When we talk about unity, that's where that unity is going to come in. When you talk about love, that's where all that's going to come in. We need to love on each other, no matter what color we are. We're all in this together. And for the young people, come out and learn. Educate, educate, educate. I can say that because when my children grew up, they went to college. Didn't go right away. I got married early. I didn't go in the Army. He was in the Army, but I felt like I was in the Army. But in 2013, I showed my children, I can do it as well. I went back, I got my associate. I went back, I got my bachelor's degree. I'm working on my master. My daughter just finished with her master, but you can do it. But we have to instill in these young people, I ancestors didn't go what they went through just for them to pull, they, you know, have those saggy pants on, pull them pants up and let's get out here and let's work together. Don't forget the lecture series. Try and Powell's lecture series. You got to bring, you got to come here with Angela has to say to you about Juneteenth. Yeah. Don't forget me now. Yeah, yes. that's auntie right there. Yes. Um, yeah. Like, real quick, shout out to Wendy for this Lee Hood painting in the background. Yeah. That was a yeah. uh, saw the Jim yeah. and Tina Bank of the Yards pictures from uh, day one. You saw the huge picture of that on the director's gallery. This is. Mm. A, uh, I know Wendy loves Lee Hood. He is an African American artist from a local artist around here, and um, she is always repping and rocking him. So, uh, Wendy, can you tell us anything more about that painting, or even your support of what you know our community is going forward to do? I'm trying to uh, figure out. I, this is like speech recognition. Is it picking up? Am I muted? Hello. We can hear you. Yes, we can not, we can hear you. <laughs> I don't know how to show. There we go. Here we go. I don't know if you can see. We that. can see it. That's yes. Up. There oh, we go. Beautiful. Nice. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, the, Lee Hood. He he, I, he painted my uh, my dog when he passed away. I, I've 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 um I've known Lee for since probably the beginning of New Bern now, like 12 years ago. And he, like, he is so inspirational until really I, I got to know Lee and Lisa Bisbee, that's and a, co a couple other artists. I really never, I'm a very uh, tech centric, I've been called person and I like eighties music. So I'm very, uh, <laughs> My kind of girl, Wendy. My so I, girl. I really never appreciated art like I probably should have, and I ne I didn't realize that you learn through art, and mm -hmm. I've learned so much, um, especially tonight, uh, Mr. Jomo. Wow, I, you know I, I read a lot of um, uh, James Baldwin and, and different books just to educate myself. And I, I just hope my, um, I hope people that are listening to this uh, do learn from you and every, the woman on this panel. So I thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm just, I'm honored to be part of this. So, yeah. And, and my sister is going to be, I'm going to bug her. I don't have to bug her. She's in Buffalo and she's going to be coming to your your event so that's awesome yes and it's crazy because hey. in buffalo and she'll be coming down to our event she'll be here thursday afternoon yes so, i mean <laughs> buffalo bills, uh, i'm trying i'm gonna be professional but the buffalo bills suck it's the new york jets yes but outside of that <laughs> that's what i said outside of that i just want to say miss wendy you are so important to this, you know what I'm saying? Because you open up the conversation mm -hmm. and I don't want you to ever look past that. You are important to the community. You understand the community and you, you, your willingness to want to learn and reach and teach is Me. what we need I'm to saying. do all the time. 
And it's so important that no matter what anyone has to say, you still stand up and you continue to put out the information, build those relationships and continue to support. So I tell anybody, if you get anything from New Burn, um, New Burn Now and, 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 and you love it, donate because that's how you show <laughs> And that's how more things are able to come and all of these good things. So it's please, please support because Wendy oh, is amazing. I love everything that, that you do, Wendy. And we really, really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. We need your donate button so I can share it on Facebook, Wendy. <laughs> Get you some money. <laughs> and last but not, of course, not least, the man that started the hour will be the man that finished yes. out the hour. Fan club! With, <laughs> fan club. Could you leave us with some words of wisdom and, you know, maybe some call to action and what you think should be the most important thing that people get out of um, this season that we're in right now? Well, thank you. I were, um, one of my jobs is I work at a uh, radio station, a uh, black uh, woman owned radio station, WFO. It's going to be celebrating 60 years this year. Um, our show is on every Sunday from 7 to 10 p.m. It's an international culture positive show, uh, power965radio.com. People listen like all over uh, America, the world. Um, it's just another time for music history and culture to be brought in. Uh, BuffaloJuneteenth.com is the website for what's going to be happening in Buffalo. Um, I like the fireworks idea, and I'm probably going to take that. Uh, we <laughs> yes, have, exchange of information. We have um, our Ma'afa Day in Buffalo is normally done at the Niagara River. For and those who don't know, the Niagara River is the river that the, it's, it's the natural border between the U.S. and Canada. Buffalo is um, we're far from New York City, 400 miles from New York City but we're a mile from Canada. I'm five minutes from the Canadian border right now where I'm sitting in my house. Um, wow. Many people the Underground Railroad would come here. Uh, the radio station is inside the African-American Heritage Corridor. Um, recently, here's another homework assignment. You, you all can Google, uh, his name is Joe Hodge or they call him Black Joe. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but Google him and you can send me a text and tell me what you all found out. Um, studying history, it's going to change the narrative and in changing the narrative it still means that we have to be healthy mentally physically and spiritually in every area that we are not functioning at our best if we seek and, and pray for the guidance from mental health to physical health to nutrition history culture um all of those things are here. And in order to function properly without being religious, if all of us are the body, and it seems as though the spirit is talking to everybody, giving us all the same instructions. But in the body, the left finger don't have to fight with the right eye about what you're doing. For the last few years, I've been using the phrase unity without uniformity. But when it, you know, the spirit... Bob my ass on says the natural mystic, you know, flowing through the air. But the spirit don't need none of us to be replicated. There, there's no need for duplicate people. That's why God made us all individual. Hallelujah. One fingerprint. Yeah. So if everybody could be their special self, even your own children, they come through you, but they really belong to creation. And while you have that time and that custodianship, Teach them how to work well with other people, but they have to be whole in order to go to such a grueling society. And we, we're falling down because we don't, we don't realize our spirit power potential. And we're basing our narratives off of what we see and not what we can vision. And some people are so disturbed that they don't look up anymore. They don't know that an eclipse took place the other day. You can look up, they don't know about the sun, the moon and the stars. Yeah. You don't understand the powers of the heavens. The things that, that we see don't, don't dictate how, how much we have, how much we don't have. It, don't, it does not dictate uh, our potential and our possibilities. That's left up to the creator and us working together. 
the, the, the creator will give us a victory, but we still got to work for it. For we, we, we have to work. We have to put work in. The blessing mm -hmm. helps us. But if we don't teach each other how to work and we become, like the Bible says, slothful, mm -hmm. that's, another, yeah. that's another residue of the slave system, you know, creating that shiftlessness. And now we not even, Reverend James Brown said, you don't work, you can't eat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's certain, there's certain to that. But you still got to keep working, and, and we have to keep working on on making each other whole. Mm -hmm. and, and let's mm -hmm. make sure we don't we don't. Society has done bad to our men, women, and children. On behalf of our ancestors, let us stop and fix as much as we can now, and don't pass it down to the next generation. Be fair to them. If you see, make those change. Yeah, stop it, let's stop it now and and, and, and cut and clear their path. Take care of each other. Just love each other. Take care of each other. Well, again, I thank you for that message. I thank mm -hmm. you for these women and all of these panels around me for um, being the vessels that y'all are to deliver such a powerful message to our community of unity um, and to be able to display that with you guys in these days ahead is more than I could have ever asked for. And I'm, my heart is full. I look at the diversity that's on this panel right now in age and location and experience. And we're still all somehow, some way here together today. If that doesn't show me confirmation of we are following the path and the blueprint that we are supposed to be on to, to a better, more mindful and equitable future with each other. And I don't know what will ever show me, but this year has been a Juneteenth unlike any other. And I'm pretty sure based on how much y'all have seen in the news and just in society as a whole on the interest and the buzz that is around Juneteenth. I mean, people that we never would have thought partnered with us or had any interest in what we were talking about or doing are now sitting up and taking notice of what we are trying to bring. And it has been an amazing experience and it continues to be every day, even down to them slinging them cases of water that we did earlier, just for the festival, <laughs> the behind the scenes and the in front of the scenes are working together to make this um, um, an amazing feat. And I, I know I keep saying it, but I'm sorry, it, it just is. Uh, the word for today is amazing. <laughs> so um, if you want to learn more about the Juneteenth of New Bern, you can go to JuneteenthofNewBern.com, as well as look at our Facebook page. We, the the uh, Facebook page is typically uploaded uh, faster than um, the the website, but typically we try to keep them at the same time. Also, the Instagram page will have have pictures from a lot of the events that we've been around to. Again, there are other sites that you can see our events. Visit newburn.com. Um, and a couple of uh, state sites as well have our uh, activities listed on them. We have some amazing graphics that are out there that people have been sharing. We've also been sharing facts leading up to Juneteenth. So every day, if you catch the Juneteenth of New Bern Facebook page, you will find local facts about uh, African-American facts um, that people have been thanking us for because they did not know this history. So I believe yes. we had 19 days total of facts leading up yes. to the that we have been expressing. And um, we want you to check the page every day because every day we'll give you something new to learn. Um, and we thank everyone for their time today. We thank Wendy for the platform. Uh-oh, Wendy's got one save round. Go ahead, Wendy. Just one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to upload this to New Bernal's YouTube channel. So people that aren't on Facebook will be able to see it and it will be there forever or whatever. So, cool. yeah. So thank you. I really appreciate everyone here. So, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Alderwoman Harris or Jamie, as we call her. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, and Really quick, you can catch her on Twitter and Facebook. You can catch Ashley on Facebook. And what other platforms do you have? And Twitter and Instagram, rose-colored glasses with two Z. Awesome. Where, 
ain't really rose colored. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie, what is your handles really quick on your social media? Uh, Twitter is Ward 2 Harris, and then Facebook is uh, All the Woman Harris, and Instagram is All the Woman Harris as well. Thank you. With, oh, make sure you give your information to Miss Sharon. What's your Twitter? <laughs> Look, you're muted. Watch out, baby, because I got them all Instagram. Oh. Facebook. Watch out, <laughs> I'm going to go see about them, June. And don't forget the cash app. <laughs> I'm going I'm to meet you on Black Twitter, Miss Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> um, as well as myself, you can find me, Talina Massey or Talina Lynn, listed on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, Snapchat, um, wherever you are at, wherever you can snap or chat, you will probably find me somewhere and also at Talina Lynn dot com um or just send a bat signal raise fist somewhere in the sky and uh one of us will probably pop out and try to help you with something so oh, <laughs> done. <laughs> yes. and also if you want to contact me i work at trying palace sharon dot brian at ncdcr.gov you can come by trying palace take a tour you want me to give the tour just ask for me and i'll be glad to help you out I'm going to ask for you. I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you all. We thank you yes. deeply. And we wholly thank Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Yes. And with that, see you guys at Juneteenth. See y'all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you later. After party in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Out.